Hi there, everybody. My name is Timothy. If you like this, please comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll go ahead and share my thoughts at the end of the presentation. Hi, my name is Nora, and I'm from California. My question is, what does it feel like when you get launched into space? Nora, it is so exciting when you get launched into space. When you feel those engines light up, everything starts vibrating and rumbling, and it gets really loud, and you just feel the... You can just feel how fast you're going up in this space. It is the most amazing ride. Hello. My name is Noah Saavedo, and I attend Planetex Middle School in the Ontario Montclair School District. My question is, what is the most challenging aspect of being an astronaut? Is it something that has completely surprised you? Wow, there are lots of different aspects of being an astronaut. I'd say physically, it's the, the rigor of spacewalking. Uh, intellectually, probably the foreign language. Uh, all of us, all astronauts have to study some type of foreign language. Uh, we speak Russian and English up here primarily, so everyone has something to learn. But emotionally, being separated from your, your family and friends on Earth uh, for the long duration missions is the probably the toughest thing. Hi, my name is Isaac Hans, and I am in the first grade in Wavern Science at Technology Charter School in Pomona. I wanted to know what is your cruise mission while in space? Isaac, that is a good question. What is our mission? What is our mission? You know, our mission is to carry out science and um, technology experiments for researchers on the ground. And so that's what we primarily do up here. We have all kinds of experiments going in all kinds of fields, biology, material science, engineering, manufacturing, all different things. And so we make it all happen. That's why we're in space. Hello, I'm Cole Alfonso, and I'm a senior at Alpharma High School in the Chafee Joint Union High School District. My question is, you've always spent years of your life training for this moment, and now that you're aboard the International Space Station, what was your oh wow moment of something you did not expect? Oh, that is a great question. And since this is my first space mission, it's been full of oh wow moments. From the moment those engines lit, to when we hit the 100 kilometer mark, to when we uh, were in outer space in orbit in free flight and could feel the weightlessness, to when we got to the station and came in the station and joined our three other crewmates. I mean, it has just been over and over. My first spacewalk, my first meal in space, my first night of sleep, and my first day waking up, it's, the whole thing has just been full of wild moments. Hi, my name is Matt. I'm from Mountain Elementary. My question is, how long can you stay in space to this one, but you know, we, we plan spacewalks for about six and a half hours, but we've got enough oxygen and more important CO2 scrubbing, because you don't want CO2 to build up when you're uh, on a spacewalk, for about seven and a half or eight hours. So that's about how long you're going to be in a space. I'm Mia Weiss. I'm the librarian at Bonview Elementary School, and I am the aunt of Commander Victor Glover. My question is, how does zero gravity affect your muscles and fitness while you're on the International Space Station? Hi, uh, I'm Mia. That's my NASA hunting. Hey, that's a great question, and working out is one of my favorite things up here. It's very interesting because you don't have to count your body weight, and so you can really focus on form, but we have an amazing machine, ARED, the Advanced Resistive Exercise Device, that allows us to do very similar lifts to what we do on the ground. And so your muscles are doing the same things, working uh, to gain strength and keep strength for your muscles and your bones, but they also are adjusting to being in microgravity at the same time. So it, it's a way for us to, uh, to, to keep our muscles and bones healthy, uh, but it, it, uh, um, it, it is slightly different because of the, the difference in your center of gravity. Hi, I'm Chloe Navarro. And I'm in fourth grade at Armstrong Elementary School in Diamond Bar. I'd like to know if plants grow on the space station. If they do, what kind of plants grow there, and how do you grow them? Oh, yes, we do have plants growing on the space station. We don't have a lot of plants. We're just really starting to learn how to grow plants in space. Right now, we've got some mustard plants growing and some pop soy, which is actually pretty tasty. We were able to eat some about a week ago. Um, really what we do now is we have what we call plant pillows, so they're little little containers that our plants stay in, and we put water into those containers, which feed the roots, and those containers contain, contain 
and all the nutrients that the plants need to grow. Hi, my name is Frankie Lopez, and I am in the fifth grade. I attend Morgan Elementary at Rialto Unified School District in California. My question is, do germs spread at the same rate as they do on Earth, or does microgravity affect them? Well, Frankie, that's a great question, and I hope it's indicative of uh, your, you being a, a scientist in the future. Uh, you know, Shannon and I are both going to have to defer that to our, our microbiologist expert crewmate, Kate Rubin, Dr. Kate Rubin, so uh, we'll have her get back to you on that one. Hi, my name is Dana, and I attend Fort Children Science in Chicago, Illinois. My question is, how do the that is a very complicated question. Actually, an easy question, a complicated answer. But basically, so we have an atmosphere up here. It is roughly 70-ish percent nitrogen, about 20 percent oxygen, and the rest uh, other elements. So um, we breathe the oxygen. We make CO2, carbon dioxide. We've got some equipment up here, carbon dioxide scrubbers, which will remove the carbon dioxide from our atmosphere so it doesn't make us sick. We can have other equipment that can take that CO2 and make it back into O2 and some other products. We use water for that and other things. Um, so we just keep it going round and round. Now, that being said, the space station, it is not completely sealed. It does have some... I won't say holes, but some pores where atmosphere will leak out. The main thing, we can make oxygen anytime we want by splitting water, hydrogen, and oxygen, and making oxygen. But the nitrogen is the problem, so we actually have to bring up tanks of extra nitrogen to replenish our nitrogen every once in a while. Hi, my name is Sheila. I am in the second grade. I attend Edison Academy of Differentiated Learning in the Ontario Montclair School District. My question is, what kind of things do you like to bring with you when you travel to outer space? Jayla, I brought pictures of my family and some of my favorite snacks. <laughs> Hi, my name is Noelle De Jesus. I go to Valley View High School of the Chafee Joint Union High School District. My question is, has your view of the planet Earth changed since you've been in space? Well, that is a very interesting question. I think um, when I look out on the Earth, I can really see how fragile our Earth is. And so, if anything, it makes me even more want to protect our Earth um, because it is a fragile place. The atmosphere is very small, and we're all connected. When you're up here, you can see things happening on one continent that will affect another continent because you can see, say, smoke from fires going across an ocean to the next continent over. So that, that's really how I've been affected, just really want to make sure that we do right by our Earth. Hi, my name is Jason Bregan. I'm in the eighth grade. I attend Edison Academy of Differentiated Learning in Ontario Montclair School District. My question is, when you were in high school, did you think you would be an astronaut, or did you have another career in mind? So when I was in high school, I was focused on playing football and my friends. Being an astronaut was even beyond the horizon of my own dreams. But throughout college and my career, I had mentors who believed in me, even when I couldn't see those kinds of gigantic aspirations for myself, and I am indebted to them still. Uh, for, for believing in me like that. Hi, my name is Zacharet, and I attend the Chaparral Elementary School in California. My question is how do you celebrate birthdays on the International Space Station? Everett, fantastic question. In fact, one of our crewmates had a birthday up here not too long ago. Um, so, because I knew it was his birthday coming up, before we left the ground, I thought of a little present and brought it up here for him. So he had a present to open. And then we also have um, this uh, food that we have. It's a chocolate cake. And so we put some decorations on his chocolate cake and ate that for his birthday. Hi, my name is Emily Lula Vermo, and I am a grade. I attend Rialto Meadow in the Rialto Unified School District. 
vintage in California. My question is, what happens to the astronauts once they return from space? Do they have any health problems or seem to need to be adjusted? That's a really good question. We have to adjust to living in 1G again. So we're up here in, in microgravity where we're able to, to float around. And so when we get back to Earth and, the, and you know, gravity is pulling us down, we have to get used to that again. And so our balance can be affected. And even though our muscles are strong, the way that they fire and the, the coordination between our brain and those muscles has been affected by living here for six months. And so we have to get back acquainted to living uh, in 1G, and one times the, the pull of gravity. Hi, my name is Serena Hibar. I'm a fifth grader. I attend Dunn Elementary School at Rialto Unified School District in California. My question is, if you can go back in time and experience any historic space mission, which one would it be and why? Oh, that is an interesting question. That's a tough one. I think maybe if I could go back in time, I would be want to be on the first lunar mission, because I think it would be really cool to be the first person to step foot on the moon or another planet. Hi, my name is Alice. I'm from California. My question is, how do astronauts believe the when there is no gravity to keep them from floating? Yes, we have uh, sleeping bags, and we can attach our sleeping bag to the wall, and so you're really still floating. You're floating inside of it, but it has special straps that allow you to create some tension and give you the sensation that you're being pulled into or like laying on something. So I actually enjoy floating, so I tie mine in one spot and let it float in the middle of my crew quarters, and I have a very comfortable night's sleep. Better than any mattress you could ever sleep on, in my opinion. All right. My name is Andrew Giovanazzi, and I attend Colony High School within the Chafee Joint Union High School District. My question is, what do you enjoy doing on Earth that you can't do on the International Space Station? Andrew, yes. I think one of the things that I enjoy the most on Earth that I can't do up here is be outside. One thing that we don't get up here is, say, the warmth of the sun on our face or the breeze in our hair or be able to smell the flowers, anything like that. So being out in nature is what... I enjoy all Hi, my name is Mia Carrero, and I am in the fifth grade. I attend Dalhanna Elementary in Rialto Unified School District in California. My question is, what emotions did you go through while going into space? Yeah, the emotions I experienced getting into space, and actually since I've been up here, are the same you have, that you have on Earth. I would say the frequency of them and having them all at the same time is what was so new to me. The, the experience was very emotional getting, getting into orbit, and uh, that, that's one of the things that makes it so memorable. Hi, my name is Anthony Alvarez. I'm in the eighth grade. I attend Edison Academy of Differentiated Learning in the Ontario Montclair School District. My question is, what are some ways you keep yourself entertained while in space? That's a good question, because we actually do work quite a lot up here, but it is important to every once in a while to take some time and just relax. And so there's a couple things that we do. Of course, we're always going to go look out the window when we have the opportunity to look at our beautiful, beautiful Earth. But our crew has decided that on Friday nights, we're going to get together and maybe watch a movie or watch a TV show. We watch different series. And so we just spend time together as a crew, because that's our family up here. Hi, my name is Alyssa Bernal, and I attend Colony High School within the Chafee Joint Union High School District. My question is, how has your everyday routine changed since living at the space station? Oh, you know, our routine is different here because there's a schedule, a very detailed schedule that we have to follow, but we still have all of the, the normal living things, eating, going to sleep, going to the bathroom, waking up, and so trying to integrate those things while living in space is actually pretty challenging. And I would say the thing that stands out to me the most that I'm going to take back to Earth is how conscious I am of how we collect, store, and get rid of trash, and, and even using our water. It's just so amazing how much we reuse uh, and recycle things up here, and that makes me want to be more um, environmentally conscious when I get back on Earth. Hi, my name is Nilino Andrade. I am in the fourth grade. I attend Dalhanna Montreal School at Rialto Unified School District. My question is, are rocks formed on other planets the same way as they are formed on Earth? You know what? I am not a geologist, but I am pretty sure they're formed the same way. 
Um, so a lot of them are formed under very high pressures, and so that's happening on other planets. But, um, you know, I don't know. We need to go find a geologist and ask them. Hi, my name is Elijah Cole. I attend Edawanda High School within the Shady Joint Union High School District. And my question is, what would you say is the most beautiful thing that you've seen up there? Uh, Elijah, the Earth is by far the most beautiful thing that I have seen up here in the daytime, at night, over deserts, over the ocean, the clouds, the entirety of it. It's beautiful at this scale to see it with your own eyes and, and for it to not be a map but to be the real thing is absolutely breathtaking. Hello, my name is Carter. I'm from California. And my question is, what gave you your first inspiration to want to become an astronaut and travel to space? Uh, what was my first inspiration? You know, I am old enough that I was four years old when we first landed on the moon. And I have this memory of my parents taking me out into the backyard, and the moon was coming up over our house. And they pointed up there and said, we have people there. And I thought that was just the best idea ever. And so ever since I was quite young, I wanted to be an astronaut. That was absolutely incredible. Victor Glover, maybe the first person from our community to make it to space. But I can tell that he will not be the last. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants. Station. Awesome. Thank you very much. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. So when I know that events like this are taking place, I'm always quick to get on the bandwagon because I'm a licensed amateur radio operator, and I feel like we need more youth in the hobby. And hearing these kids talking to the International Space Station, you know, a lot of these kids, the majority of them, more than likely do not hold a valid amateur radio license. So they're working with clubs, and they're working with individuals, and perhaps they're working with repeater owners, or whatever the case may be. These clubs repeater owners, individuals, generally are working on behalf of the schools where the kids are stationed at. And so when these kids are introduced to the ideas and the concepts of talking to the International Space Station, talking to the folks aboard, that is something that is huge. And that is something that I believe will actually encourage kids to get their license and or to pursue the hobby of ham radio. And you know, the thing is, ham radio is more than just a hobby. It can become a lifestyle, but it definitely, definitely is something that is practical and very much applicable in an emergency situation. And so let me cover my thoughts concerning the event that took place today, March 18th, 2021. Shannon Glover, or I'm sorry, Shannon Walker and Victor Glover were stumped by some of these kids, and I thought that was just absolutely awesome. And a lot of the questions that these kids asked were very thought-oriented. They were very much thought-provoking, and that is one thing that I love about these events, because you never know the kinds of questions that these kids are going to ask. Now, the ARISS program asks the students to write down the questions because each student is usually only going to get one question in. One thing that I thought was really cool was when Victor Glover's aunt came on the microphone and said, this is Victor Glover's aunt. And then he confirms it. Okay, then he confirms it. And I thought that was really cool. And so I was really impressed uh, by the quality of the questions. I was really impressed by the quality of the event. And just as a side note, the fact that I was able to record and edit all of this on my iPhone uh, is pretty remarkable. So I hope to bring you more of these if you like this. Again, let me just encourage you to comment, like, and subscribe. Hit that little notification bell button. I guess that I guess that's what they call it is a little bell. And so hit that 
because if you like this video, I might actually upload more of these. And so uh, the comments, likes, and subscribes will tell me, hey, this is the kind of content that we want to see. Okay, this is the kind of content that I want to see. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I know I've enjoyed checking it out and listening to all of the wonderful questions that the kids and the adults brought to the International Space Station. And my name is Timothy. Thank you for joining me. Take care, and may God bless you all. In Jesus' name.